He just wins more stuff. Stack it on, stack it on up. Stuff. Never gonna ever get enough. Good afternoon and welcome to Daybreak Warriors Navajo language lesson. In the first video, we talked about the basics of the concepts of objects at rest in the Navajo language. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use objects at rest terms for unusually shaped items and discuss some exceptions to the rules. If you are unfamiliar with the terms objects at rest in terms of how they're used in Navajo language, I would highly encourage you to watch my first video before watching this one to get a better understanding of those basic concepts. In the first video, I gave some clear cut examples. In this second video, we're going to discuss the gray areas. This video is also going to be less structured and less organized than the first video. I won't be using a lot of Navajo nouns in my examples so that you can focus on the objects at rest terms themselves. For our first example, we're going to answer the question, when is sakan? Sakan? What I mean by that is we have a closed bottle of water here. In my last video, I had mentioned that a closed bottle of water is referred to as sa'an. It is solid. It is firm. Now, I also mentioned that when you have an open container, you refer to it as sakan. So, once we open this bottle of water, do you still say sa'an or sakan? We say sa'an. The unofficial rule is for an object in an open container to be considered sakan, the opening has to be about the width of the container. If the hole is smaller than that, like an open bottle of water or a can of soda, then you use the word sa'a to describe that object at rest. A salt shaker with little holes in it is not considered an open container for this reason. So when it's at rest, you consider it sa'a. Now, although I just said that an object in an open container has to have an opening that is the width of the container to be considered sakan. A fast food drink with the lid and straw attached is considered sakan. Pop sakan. Todel choshe sakan. Another unofficial rule is that if the object is in a container where the lid is easily removable, you consider it Sakan. Now this can get a little confusing because stew that's in a pot with a closed lid, that's considered sakan. While a shoe in a shoe box is considered sa'an. That's because the shoe box is considered to be a tighter fit lid than stew in a stew pot. Containers of liquid can be confusing. So I have my mom here who is going to explain how the different types of containers will either be sa'an or sakan. This is sakan because there's water in it. This one is a container by itself, sa'an. Even if it has water in it, it'll still be sa'an. I don't know, for some reason, this is still sakan because there's water in it. But if it was empty, this would be sa'an. This one also, the same as this one, sa'an. Even if there is something in it, it would still be sa'an with water in it. Like this one too, it would be sa'an. Now this one, the sakan with water in it. If you're asking somebody to put on some coffee, coffee, the sa'a, I mean to put up some coffee, the sa'a, coffee, the sa'a, would be this one. Now this one is sa'a. Maybe it's because with the lid, you won't say sa'a with this one, like this one or this one. But this is sa'a, I mean sa'a with water, sa'a. 
This one, eh? It's a container also, like a bottle of water. Eh? So, uh, this one. There again, like this one or like this one. This is so, uh, Same thing. This is so, uh, Pop. Shut the so, uh, so, uh, This one. This one. This one. And that one is so, uh, It's like every other one. At times, the classification of the object at rest term will be dependent on how the object is handled. For example, leftovers will always be saka, even if the lid of the container is closed. Because when you're taking leftovers home, you always say leftovers, nashkal, leftovers, nashkal. I'm taking leftovers home, and nashkal is a variant of saka. Now I'd like to use this time to point out that the word nazka refers to items in several containers, just like in my last video of fish in several jars. Fish nazka, lo nazka. Nazka can also refer to food in several open containers. Food nazka, chian nazka. Saka not only refers to items in obvious bowls, but you can use saka to describe objects on plates or platters. Pizza saka. Pizza saka. For loads in the back of a truck or in a flatbed, you do not say saka. You either say beat sanil or beat shaja. If the items in the truck or the flatbed are small items, then you say beach jaw. If the items are long, bulky, or larger, then you say beach sanil. Hey, truck beach sanil. Oh, chitty bikaj and des ahe beach sanil. Wood, trailer beach jaw. Chij be na zizi beach jaw. Boards, Trailer be senil. Tinehesji be na zinze be senil. Hey, trailer, baka da senil. Tlo be na zinze baka da senil. And remember, be means inside, baka means on top of it. If it is a single item load, you say be sa'a. Couch. Truck be sa'a. Baka da has dahe. Chede bekej at des ahe be sa'a. In conversation, you might hear e senil or e saja. E just means inside like b, but it has the b removed. Once you remove the b, you turn it into an intransitive word. When you use the word e, you're saying it is inside something. You're not saying what it is inside of. You're just saying it is inside something. E. Hey, e senil. Wood, e shaja. Try not to mix up transitive and intransitive words. For example, if you say, hey, truck e senil. That sentence is wrong. E is an intransitive word. When you use that word, you don't say what the item is located in that makes the sentence wrong. For this reason, I would implore you to talk to your parents, your grandparents, your Navajo language teacher for things that you have questions on just to make sure that you have a correct understanding of what you're learning. Now, one of my viewers, Lucky Chalms, she asks about the use of B versus B for items in containers or objects. Do, bowl B, sa'a. Taos ni, kleds a B, sa'a. Books, purse B, sa'nil. Naltsos, beso bezis B, sa'nil. Vix, jar B, sa'kle. Now, Lucky Charms' mother was using the example to be and she was wondering that 
if using be versus be was a dialect difference. I am a person who believes that there's really no big dialect differences across the Navajo reservation. Sure, we have different names for things. Sure, people say things like yes and thus. But in terms of the basic grammar, it is the same from Alamo to Flagstaff. I believe that there's not very many dialect differences. So for the example that Lucky Chom's mother used, be means by means of, and of course, seka describes the object being in an open container. So when she said to be seka, she was saying the container is holding water. Saying be seka describes the container holding the item. A flower pot is called chil be seka ne. It describes the container holding the plant. Another example of using be versus be is a coffee pot. This example is also an exception to the rules when you're talking about objects at rest terms. Now, you would think that for a coffee pot, because coffee is liquid, you would say kohwe be seka for a pot holding coffee. Instead, you actually say kohwe be sa'a. Even if the lid is off, you say kohwe be sa'a. So some of these objects at rest terms, the exceptions you're just going to have to memorize. Just as an FYI, even though for a flower pot you say chil be sakane, you don't call a coffee pot kohwe be sa'ane. Instead, you would call a coffee pot kohwe be yebeje. If you had watermelons in a big crate, you would say watermelon paper box beat senil. Chechian nal sostitsa be senil. Now you can also say be seka, but most people will say be senil. Thank you, Lucky Chomps. I was hoping for more questions in the comments section so I could include them in this video. So I thank you for your question. In our last video, we had mentioned that a parked car is referred to in the parked position, just like a standing person or an animal. For a person seated in the vehicle, you do not say instead you say is the intransitive verb for someone standing with something. For example, if my sister Tanya was standing with her husband Hansen, I would say Tanya Hansen yil sze. Tanya Hansen yil sze. In this version, I am using the transitive verb because I'm saying Tanya is standing with Hansen yil sze. In our next example, Tyreek is sitting in a vehicle. We do not say Tyreek chidi. Yes, sizen. It is incorrect. It is wrong. To make a correct statement, we'll use the intransitive verb, kind of like e senil. Bil isen is an intransitive verb. When you use that word, you're saying that the person is standing with something, but you're not mentioning the vehicle. Tyreek bil isen. Tyreek bit is in. But for now, just keep in mind that when you're using this phrase for someone in a vehicle, you don't say sakan, you say bit is in. You can also say e sada. E sada. E, of course, means inside it. Sada means he's sitting. So Tyreek e sada. Tyreek e sada. Tyreek is sitting. He's in a parked vehicle. As I said in my last video, you can say siyen for a puddle. Some people will say tuotasaka for deep puddles, like puddles in a dip. If we had several puddles, we can pluralize the puddles with the word nazien. Tuonazien. Tuonazien. 
Remember, Sazid is a small amount of water. Some people will say to Sazid for a small puddle, or they will say Tota Nazid for several puddles. And reserve Tosiye for larger puddles or stock ponds, or Tonazie for several large puddles. For our next example, we'll move on to fry bread and tortilla. Both of these items are a flat sheet-like item. So when we're talking about one piece of fry bread or one piece of tortilla, do we use the word silsoz? The answer is no. For a piece of fry bread, we say sa'a. This is going to be very important when we start talking about handling terms. When you're trying to impress your in-laws and you're trying to say, hand me that piece of fry bread, you want to make sure that you say shana'a and not shanitos. For long, firm, slender objects, like a broom or a shovel, you use the term sitra when it is at rest. What do you say about an axe that's at rest? Even though it is long and slender in its entirety, for an axe you say sa'a, axe sa'a, tsenil sa'a. When you remove the axe head and you just have the handle, then it becomes sitra, axe handle sitra, tsenil bitsin sitra. Even though a power saw or a vacuum cleaner have a long flexible cord attached, you don't refer to these items as salah. You refer to them by their base frame body. Power saw sa'a. Chij ben hichisha sa'a. Vacuum cleaner sa'a. Even though a vacuum cleaner has wheels, it is considered sa'a instead of sizi. So eyeglasses are flexible items. They can be considered string-like or they can cons be considered rope-like. So for an eyeglass at rest, do you say salah? The pair of glasses is considered two objects, so you consider it sanil. Sanil. If it's hard for you to think about what classification glasses fall under, just think of their Navajo name. Nak e sanile. Nak e sanile. Nak e meaning the eye socket area. Sanil means they're at rest there. Nak e sanile eyeglasses. Pairs are an interesting category. In the analytical lexicon of Navajo, Young and Morgan say that pairs are in the classification of sala. So that would include a pair of gloves, socks, or theoretically a pair of earbuds or earrings. Young and Morgan translate the mountain that's located near Crystal, New Mexico, Son Sala, as a pair of stars lying down. Son Sala. So I asked my own parents. They would classify one sock or one glove as Sala, but they would refer to the pair as Sanil. But they would also refer to a pair of shoes as either salah or sanil. I would implore you to ask your parents, your grandparents, your Navajo language teacher, where they would categorize pairs in terms of objects at rest terms. A wristwatch is a flexible object. Would you consider this salah? The answer is sa'a. If you had seen my video on how to say put on your mask in Navajo, then you probably would have guessed that the answer is sa'a. In that video, I had mentioned that to say put on your watch in Navajo, you would say Nint'a is a variant of sa'a and it references the solid watch face. This item is similar to the vacuum cleaner, the power saw, and the axe where you're referencing the base frame. When ice forms on the road, it usually forms spread out across the road. So for that reason, would you consider ice saccade? No, the answer is citra. 
When ice freezes on the road, it's considered to be frozen stiff like a board, so you say citron. A teen bacago, tien citron. A teen bacago, tien citron. Although empty cups, bowls, and plates are considered citron, when you're talking about a wedding basket, it's usually referred to as citron, as if it was a board or a stick. Still, you can say for a wedding basket. Though singular animals fall under the category of when they're lying down, snakes can fall under the category as if it was a rope or belt. Snake On that topic, frogs can be considered a blob like mud. So when they're sitting in one spot, you can refer to them as sitle, frog da sitle, chal da sitle. You can even use this term in slang if you wanted to tell somebody to plop down right here. You would just say kwe da hantle, kwe da hantle, and it just means plop down right here. As a side note, if I had spilled something like ketchup or mustard on my clothes, I could say. Ketchup, she bon dasatle. Ketchup, she bon dasatle. She means my clothes. Bon means on it. Dasatle means it's at rest up high as a mushy substance. Ketchup, she bon dasatle. I got some ketchup on my clothes. In my last video, I mentioned that frosting applied to cake, you say bestlej. You can also say that about butter that's applied to bread. Bechlej. Unused syrup in one spot is satle. When you apply syrup to pancakes, you don't say bechlej. Instead, you use the word bekestseed. Bekestseed. It describes it being poured over that item. Bekestseed. You can also use the word bekestseed. To describe mustard or ketchup that's applied to a hot dog. Bags can fall into different categories based on their texture. Firm purses are considered like a coach bag or a backpack. Some people will refer to these bags as silsos, especially if they are a looser bag, but a big heavy bag like a tote bag that's referred to as seyin. As I stated in my last video, timber lying down on its side is referred to as setrin. You can also refer to it as setien, timber setien, nastran setien. Just as mountains with peaks are referred to as shijod, flat mountains with no peaks like the Chuska Mountains or Black Mesa, you can refer to them as setien, mountain setien. Another way to use sada is to ask if somebody is at home. So you can say, Is that person home? Another thing I wanted to mention is that for an assortment of objects, you can say sinil or shaja. They don't have to be all the same thing to be considered sinil or shaja. If you wanted somebody to clear the table, you can say, If you noticed, I was very careful about how I arranged brooms, ladders, and canes in my last video. These items had to be laid directly on the floor to be considered citron. If these items are leaning against something and are not lying directly on the floor, the verb to describe them at rest is entirely different. Cane, kini, tra. Cane, wall, bini, tra. Kini, tra and bini, tra are words for long, slender, stiff, stick like objects that are leaning against another object. Remember, the word for a long, slender item at rest is citron. 
We are using the suffix at the end of that word tra for the words pénitre and kénitre. The difference between both of these words is that kénitre is an intransitive verb and bénitre is a transitive verb. When you say cane, kénitre, you're saying the cane is leaning against something, but you're not saying what it is leaning against. Umbrella, kénitre. Broom, kénitre. Bénitre is a transitive verb. So you have to say what the item is leaning against. Cane, wall, bénitre. The cane is leaning against the wall. Umbrella, chair, bénitre. Broom, trash can, bénitre. Cane, counter, bénitre. For solid objects, you can say kinia or binia. And remember, a solid object at rest is sa. -a. So for these words, we're using the suffix at the end for the words kinia or binia. Tse, kinia. Tse, kinia. Now here is another exception to the rules. When a ladder is lying on the ground, we say citra because it's long and slender. When it's leaning against something, we say kinia or binia because it's a solid, bulky object. Ladder, hey, binia. Ladder, tree, binia. Ladder, kinia. Ladder, kinia. Senil, of course, refers to several items. We can use a version of this to describe several things lying on their sides, like boards with the words kininil or bininil. Tsinehesji, kininil. Boards, kininil. Kinie and binie also exist, but most people will just say siye for items in bags that are leaning against something. Now, there is a version to describe people leaning against an object, but these will really depend on how the person is leaning against that object. Note that the suffix at the end is like sitien because it's like the person is lying against the wall. If the person was lying against the wall with his back to the wall, you would say ho one yinis or ho one yinitien. Yinis is similar to sez because the person is sort of standing. If the person was leaning against the wall with one hand, you would say ho one yinachin sez, ho one yinachin sez. Sizi is used because they're practically standing. Yenache means against it. If the person was sitting against the wall, then you would say Hoan Yenache Sada or Hoan Yenida. Of course, Yenida has the same suffix as Sada for a person sitting. Switching gears. Keep in mind, when you change how an item is arranged, it changes its object at rest term. What I mean is, a blanket randomly on a bed, if it's heavy, is siye. But once you use that blanket to nicely fix and arrange the bed, you say bikestye instead of siye. When an item is in an organized arrangement like boards, you can refer to them as senil. But once they're unorganized, you refer to them as shaja. The concepts of objects at rest get more complicated than anything I am showing you here. For example, one pile of pennies is considered shaja. Several piles of pennies is considered najja. The reason I bring this up is Words in a sentence can be described as sa da shija, just like Fanny from the Padre Hour shows us here. 
A paragraph can also be described by sa dashaja because it's one collection of words. On the other hand, like pennies in several piles, several paragraphs or several chapters are described by sa da najja. Sa da najja. Similarly, a constellation is one group of stars. For that reason, you can refer to one constellation as son da shja. But if you're referring to several constellations, then you would say son da najja. Son da najja. If you're talking about stars in general and not a specific constellation, you can say son da senil for a few stars. If you are talking about pockets of stars, you can say son da naz nil. If you are talking about many stars, then you would say son da naz ja. Kin is the word for a building. Kin sa is one building. If you're talking about a small town or settlement, then you would say kin da ja. In my last video, for a bike that's standing or parked, I said the word is sez. But when the item is lying on its side, even though it's flexible, you say sa. Also in my last video, I mentioned that animate objects or copies of them are either setien, chetiege, or chetje, based on how many there are. Now, if you had a whole counter full of Zuni fetishes that were on the counter, you would actually refer to them as Sinil instead of Shije. Put these words into practice and listen to clarifications of what people around you are telling you. I feel like I left this out of my last video. Like a tree, a single bush can be considered Sakad. Sagebrush, Sakad. Tsa, Sakad. Similarly, more than one bush or more than one sagebrush is nazkad. Sagebrush nazkad. Tsa nazkad. Also in my last video, I had mentioned that I would discuss what classification tissue in a tissue box falls into. Tissue sticking out of a tissue box is not really saka or sotsoz. You actually think of it as the whole item just as you would have with the vacuum cleaner and the power saw and the axe. The box is solid, so you consider the item sa. On that note, a hamburger that's wrapped in paper, it's not considered siltsoz. The wrapping is not considered a bag. You consider the whole item, so you consider it sa. sa. That being said, when you unwrap a burger, even though there are several items stacked on top of each other to make it an item, you consider the burger sa. Teepees, tents, revival tents. You may think that they fall under the category of sotsoz because they are made up of flat sheet-like objects, but when they are set up, they fall under the category of sa. Nabal sa, Nabal sa, Nabal heads oze sa, Nabal heads oze sa. An umbrella is considered sitka whether it is opened or closed. As my last example, a toilet paper at rest is sa. It is a round, solid, firm object at rest. You call it sa. Now, if you have one piece of toilet paper that is just lying on the counter or on the floor, then it's seltzos. Seltzos. If you have two or more, then it's senil. Senil. As I said in my last video, 
most objects will fall under the category of sa'a. This video was meant to show you that yes, using objects at rest terms sometimes can be clear cut. Sometimes there are gray areas. Sometimes you will just have to learn those exceptions by talking to people and practicing your Navajo language. My take home message is this. We still have fluent speakers among us. Practice what I've shown you here. If you get corrected by an elder, try not to argue with them saying it is this way, it is that way, this is how I understand it. Learn it the way they're telling you. There's probably an exception or there's probably an underlying rule that you will understand as you use these examples in public. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, of course, place it in the comments, but I encourage you to talk to your parents, your grandparents, or your Navajo language teacher about the questions you have. And have a nice day. Stack it on, stack it on up. Stop. Never gonna ever.